The never-ending story gave a generation a world of dreams and imagination, but unfortunately, some stories do have an end. These actors from the films are sadly no longer with us. The wonderful adventures in The Never-Ending Story wouldn't have even begun if Bastian hadn't stumbled into the bookstore owned by cranky Carl Conrad Coriander, portrayed by Thomas Hill. The video arcade is down the street. Here we just sell small rectangular objects. They're called books. Over the years, Hill played a wide range of characters in many television series and films, most notably the recurring role of Jim Dixon in the classic CBS sitcom Newhart. However, he returned to the role of the ornery bookseller he had created six years prior in 1990's The Never-Ending Story 2, The Next Chapter. On April 20, 2009, the 81-year-old actor died from a heart attack, but he will always be remembered as the gruff old man who inspired a world of children to crack open a book. Moses Gunn memorably portrayed the herald of the childlike empress who sends Atreyu on his quest to save Fantasia. Is there any chance of success? I do not know. Aside from the never-ending story, Gunn featured in a number of prominent roles in film and television, including Shaft's arch-nemesis Bumpy Jonas and Shaft and Shaft's Big Score. He was also nominated for an Emmy for his portrayal of Kintango in ABC's 1977 miniseries Roots. His success wasn't just limited to the screen, either. For his stage work, he won an Obie Award in 1968 for playing Aaron in Titus Andronicus, and he was nominated for a Tony in 1976 for portraying Benjamin Hurstpool in The Poison Tree. On December 16, 1993, the 64-year-old actor died from asthma complications, leaving behind a wealth of treasured performances. Played by Patricia Hayes, Urgel is a gnome who spends most of her time making gross broths and bickering with her husband, Engelwook. Now it's my turn with him. Oh, no, you don't. I decide when he's well. It's your turn when I say it's your turn. Appearing in films and television since 1936, Hayes accrued over 130 acting credits to her name, including roles in the fantasy film Willow and the comedy classic A Fish Called Wanda. She also appeared in television classics like BBC's The Benny Hill Show, Till Death Us Do Part, and Spooner's Patch. Her role in a 1971 episode of the BBC anthology series Play for Today snagged her a BAFTA win. On September 19, 1998, Hayes died due to natural causes at the age of 88. Sidney Bromley gave a memorable performance as Engelwook in The Never-Ending Story, imbuing the scientist gnome with the perfect balance of comedic chaos and dramatic gravitas. The character's knowledge of the Southern Oracle helps Atreyu further along on his quest to save the Empress. Have you ever been to the Southern Oracle? <laughs> what do you think? Throughout a career that spanned over 50 years, Bromley found himself in roles that were just as fantastical and adventurous. He was also in other fantasy classics like the 1981 epic Dragon Slayer and 1986's Pirates. On August 14, 1987, Bromley died at the age of 78, but his work will be remembered as a gateway to adventure for many. Played by Tilo Prochner, the Night Hob is one of the first fantastical creatures we meet in the never-ending story. Is he a nutcase? No, he's a rock biter. A rock biter. A rock biter! While internationally, Prochner is most likely known for playing the Night Hob. He has acted in over 200 German films and television series dating from 1967 all the way through 2021. He also wrote and published his only novel in 2013, which told the story of a doctor in a failing relationship. On July 2, 2020, Bruckner died of heart failure at the age of 79, ending a truly remarkable career. Perhaps the most emotionally devastating scene in the never-ending story, or any movie for that matter, is when Atreyu's horse Artax succumbs to despair and drowns in the Swamp of Sadness. The scene is so powerful and convincing that it led to a persistent rumor that the filmmakers actually drowned the horse on set, which isn't true. In actuality, two horses were trained to go up to their necks in water and were frequently swapped out while filming to not overwhelm them. The horses were never fully submerged, as is evident in the finished film. After filming was complete, one of the horses was gifted to the actor playing Atreyu, Noah Hathaway. However, due to how complicated it would be to ship to his home, Hathaway decided to leave the horse in Germany with his stunt riding double. The horse lived on his ranch for the next 20 years or so before passing. Released six years after the 1984 original, the never-ending story 2, the next chapter, was in need of a younger actor to play Bastian, the role originally portrayed by Barrett Oliver. Jonathan Brandis stepped in to fill the role and told the story of Bastian returning to again save Fantasia. Is there no one with the courage to stand up with me against the Giants? Prior to the sequel, Brandis had mostly appeared in small television roles. Afterward, he quickly found himself in a ton of higher-profile roles throughout the early 90s. Those included Stephen King's It, Rodney Dangerfield's 1992 sports comedy Ladybugs, and the 1992 Chuck Norris karate comedy Sidekicks. But he truly became a certified teen idol when he was cast as the scientific genius Lucas in NBC's sci-fi action series Sequest DSV. 
Tragically, on November 12, 2003, Brandis died by suicide at the age of 27. Freddie Jones does double duty in The Never Ending Story 3, playing the old man of Wandering Mountain, as well as taking over the role of Mr. Coriander. The Old Man of Wandering Mountain was the author of the never-ending story in the original novel, but here he functions more as its protector, as the book basically writes itself. That is, until some bullies steal the book from Coriander's library and start writing a new future. Throughout his nearly 60-year career, Jones appeared in over 200 film and television projects. These included big films like 1983's Kroll, 1985's Young Sherlock Holmes, and 2002's The Count of Monte Cristo. He also featured in three David Lynch films, Dune, The Elephant Man, and Wild at Heart. His final role was a 13-year run as Sandy Thomas on the ITV soap opera Emmerdale. On July 9, 2019, Jones died at the age of 91, leaving behind a wife and three sons, including Harry Potter and Marvel alum Toby Jones. Falcor the Luck Dragon was voiced by a different actor in all three films. In The Never Ending Story 3, the fluffy and lovable character is voiced by fan convention mainstay William Hootkins. Oh no, I'm losing altitude! Look at me! Hootkins appeared in over 100 projects, including 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark and 1989's Batman. But he was probably best recognized for flying his X-Wing in the Battle of Yavin under the callsign Red Six in the 1977 classic Star Wars. That's right, Hookins was the fan favorite rebel pilot Jack Tono Porkins. On October 23, 2005, Hookins died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 57. In the never ending story 3, Fantasia is threatened by a group of bullies calling themselves the Nasties. Each Nasty has their role in the group, and the muscle was provided by Rage, beefily portrayed by Adrian Dorval. <laughs> Over the years, Dorval contributed his talents to a wide range of popular television series, usually in small parts. That includes MacGyver, Highlander, the 2004 Battlestar Galactica, Stargate SG-1, and more. On the feature film side, he popped up in Shanghai Noon and The Chronicles of Riddick, to name a few. On January 5, 2021, Dorval died from cancer at the age of 57. In The NeverEnding Story 3, the childlike empress and the old man of Wandering Mountain are assisted in their quest to Fantasia by a character known only as Large Head. I was able to butt us through to the secret tunnels for our escape. Well, that's using your head. When the Nine Days actor Thomas Petro was on set, he would spend over four hours in makeup each morning to achieve the bulbous-headed look of the character. While he has a few other on-screen credits to his name, Petro put a much larger stamp on the world of voice acting. Specifically, he dubbed over 2,000 films into his native German. Notable instances include providing the voice for Biff Tannen in all of the Back to the Future films, dubbing over Gary Oldman in four separate films, and voicing Sheldon Plankton in the Nickelodeon television series SpongeBob SquarePants. Vielleicht hast du recht. Manchmal bin ich ein richtiger Vollidiot. Ich befehle dir, mir dabei zu helfen, netter zu werden! On April 13, 2018, Petro died at the age of 61, leaving behind a lifetime of voices. At the beginning of the first never-ending story, Bastian finds himself on the run from a handful of bullies. Just before he makes it to the bookstore, Bastian ducks past two men on the sidewalk, causing one of them to drop a bottle of milk. It's actually a sneaky cameo. The guy who drops the milk is played by the film's director, Wolfgang Peterson, who went on to direct films like Air Force One, The Perfect Storm, and Troy. The man next to him is Bernd Eichinger, the producer of The NeverEnding Story. Eichinger produced a wide range of films, including four Resident Evil films, the first two Fantastic Four films, and the Sean Connery Christian Slater film The Name of the Rose. In addition to producing, he was also an accomplished screenwriter, having written 2006's Perfume, The Story of a Murderer, about a scent-obsessed serial killer, and 2004's Downfall, about the rise and fall of Hitler. The latter received an Oscar nomination and thousands of re-subtitled Hitler rant parodies. Tragically, they both passed. At the age of 61, after having worked on nearly 100 films, Eichinger died of a heart attack on January 24, 2011. Peterson died on August 12, 2022 from pancreatic cancer. He was 81.